Hello, welcome to another video on GPROMS. Today we want to do something different. We want to look at how we could uh, use elementary task in GPROMS to simulate um, some operating procedure. So how do we do this? Let's say we, we already have a, um, a working simulation. So I want to use a simple uh, tank problem. You have a tank model, a buffer tank model that I already uh, showed you earlier. So this is a model already implemented, working, and then we want to perform some operation um, on that model. For example, we want to simulate it for 1,000 seconds, then after which we'll, we will increase um, inlet flow rate by 20%. To, you know, this is possible so that we could, you know, because um, in real world our problems, so the, the plans or operations are not saved from external influence, what happens if there is a sudden change in the temperature, uh, for example? How does that affect your, the operation? So if there's a sudden or a surge in the um, the value of the flow rate into the tank, what happens to the, the process? So how will the, uh, the variable uh, respond to that? So this will help you uh, simulate that in GPROMS. So we will increase the inlet flow rate by 20%, and then we wait until the liquid in the tank has reached 3.2 meters. And then we decrease the inlet flow rate by 10%, wait for 400 seconds, increase the inlet flow rate by 5 kilograms per second. And then we wait again for uh, 200 um, seconds. Okay. So to do this, we need to specify because we have multiple operations. We need to first um, identify how we want to run. Do we want to run this one at a time? So you have to wait for one to finish before you start the other one. Or do you want, do you want to perform some of the operations in parallel? If you, if you want to perform the operations in parallel or simultaneously, you have to use parallel keyword. If you want them to run one at a time, you have to use sequence. So you want to perform the operation in series, basically. So because what I want to do here they have to be performed in sequence. So we need to use sequence. Um, so I have to type sequence, then end. I need to end sequence here. So now so you need to end sequence. So end and have uh, sequence, and this will end the sequence. So the first operation I want to perform is just to run it for 1,000 seconds. So I will do continue um, for 1,000. Okay, so once I do that, I, I can run it and the simulation will progress for 1,000 seconds. So after 1,000 seconds, I want to suddenly increase the, the flow rate. So this is step increase in the flow rate by 20%. So if I want to do step increase in the flow rate by 20%, I want it to jump from the current value to a new value, which is basically 20% with its 20% increase in the current value. So to do this, we use the elementary task in GPROMS called reassign. So I have to do reassign. So I need to end reassign as well. I'll end that there. So end, this will end reassign. And then um, what do I want to change? I want to re reassign the value of the flow rate. So how is the flow rate defined? It's defined as F underscore in. So the model is tank. So I'll do tank dot because I don't have uh, access to the variable directly. And then colon equals. So what I want to do, I want to now node, grab the current value of F in, because though I already assigned it to uh, the value to 20 is uh, to 10, yeah, the F in is 10. So I can just add code it and say 10 plus, um, uh, plus 20% of that. I can do that, uh, but, to make it more robust, I can just say, okay, whatever the current value of F in is. So if I say old, then grab that. So this is now the current value. I want to add 20% to it. I can just multiply by 1.2. Uh, I can do that, or I can say plus 0 0.2 multiplied by that. It's still the same thing. So I can just say 1.2 multiplied by old, value of that and that will change the value to 1.2 basically the, the value will change from 10 to 12 okay so after that i want to wait until the liquid in the tank has reached 3.2 meters so you know when you increase the flow rate the, the liquid in the tank will rise 
So we want we want to see we want to continue to we want to keep that flow rate at that level until the the liquid uh, level as rate three point two. So what, what do I do? Continue until so on it a, a logical con uh, condition is satisfied. So until the tank I have to do tank dot the height. So the height has reached greater than 3.2. You look at it. I, I, I didn't say tank dot h equals 3.2. So we've done this uh, for numerical reasons. We, we don't want to use uh, 3. Point, exact value of the, the height because um, uh, similar to most uh, of these uh, tools, they use a um, numerical approach to solving this problem. So we we it is better to put to set the value as h greater than 3.2 because you might not be able to get a value of height that is exactly 3.2. So because of numerical approximation, or because the value might not be calculated to this level of precision. Okay, so that's why it's better to say to say hit with about 3.2 might be slightly greater than it maybe 3.2001 something like that will still work okay so once you do that uh, then we want to then decrease uh, the inlet flow rate so i want to decrease the inlet flow rate by 10 percent so i can just copy that and reassign the value and just say whatever the value is multiply by 0 0.9 so once i do that i will decrease the inlet flow rate by 10 percent and then wait for 400 seconds. So to wait for 400 seconds, I say continue for 400, okay? Then to see the effects of that perturbation, the effect of that sudden decrease in the, in the, flow, in the inlet flow. So I'll, I'll run it for 400 seconds to see that effect. And then I want to also increase the inlet flow rate by this amount. So I would say a reassign. I want to re reassign the inlet flow rate because that's the only variable I can play with. Um, the old value plus five. Okay, so I need to end this with semicolon. So it's reassigned semicolon. Okay. All right. So that's what I want to do. After reassigning the value, like add five kilograms per second to it, then I want to wait for 200 seconds. So I need to do continue, continue for 200 seconds. So 200. Okay, once I do this, then I can run the simulation and then see how the system will respond to these perturbations. So when you run, um, you can expand the result trajectory variables. If I check F in, then I can view the various perturbations. You can see it was initially at 10, increase it by 20%, it jumped to 12, then reduce it by 10% and then add five a kilogram per second to it. Then how does the height respond? So you can see it's increased. Then because we increase the flow rate, it's, then you can see it doesn't follow that path anymore. It's increased and the gradient increased and then decrease and then increase. Okay, so that's how uh, the system will respond. Now to put them together, so let's say we want to put them together on the same plot, I can use the GRMS uh, plotting tool in, in G problems. So if I rerun and make sure I set, I check, uh, send result trajectory to GRMS. So if I do uh, send result trajectory to GRMS and then, okay, then uh, the GRM, GRMS window should open.
Okay, so this is the Jeremy's window. So we click 2D outline, uh, then expand that. So we double click on F in, so you can see um, the flow rate and I want to plot the height at the same time, double click on H. You click right because I want to put the axis on the right. So, okay. And then you can see the, the variables. So you can see uh, it runs for some time and then will increase the flow rate and that increased and then reduce it, that reduce and then increase, okay? So that's it for this video. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.